Hello and welcome to another episode in the GDScript Fundamental Tutorial Series. In this episode, we will be talking about signals. Before we start talking about signals, however, I do want to go over one principle, and that is the single responsibility principle. To understand what I'm trying to do with the examples I'm about to show you, I am using the single responsibility principle, and that basically means that every module or class should have responsibility over a single part of the functionality provided by the software, in this case our game. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example where signals will come in handy. So let's say we have this asteroids game. We have our player and we have our health that lets us know we're still in the game. Each object you see is basically handled by a script. In this case, the player script handles everything about our main character. And the health script is in charge of determining how much lives we have. Basically, the health script is in charge of displaying the lives and making sure it's displaying the correct amount. Now, let's say we get hit by an asteroid. What we want to do is we want to let the health script know that we lost a life. But how exactly do we handle this situation where we have a player object that gets hurt and we want to inform the health script that we were hurt. Well, this scenario is what leads us to the observable pattern. Basically, the observable pattern is where an object, which will be called the subject, maintains a list of its dependents, which will be called observers, and the subject notifies the observers of any state changes, usually by calling one of their methods. Now let's take that game and let's put it into a flow diagram. So as you can see here, we have our player, and our player is actually the subject and the health, in this case the health script, is the observer. Now when our player gets hurt, we want to emit a signal. Basically we want to emit a signal to our health script, and when our health script receives that signal, we want the health script to do something, to react. This is basically the essence of the observable pattern. When something happens to our subject, we emit a signal to basically anything that wants to listen to our player class, and when that that observer receives the signal, it reacts, usually by calling a function to do something, to act on it. Now, to the subject, the subject doesn't really care what it's connected to. Really, the subject only focuses on emitting a signal, and really, it doesn't know, the, our subject doesn't know or care about who's listening. In the observable pattern, we do have a way of collecting data. For example, usually our observers are in an array, but in reality the player class or the subject is not too focused on the dependent list. Rather, it's more focused on making sure it has a list, first of all, but that it emits something to everything inside the list. Basically, the subject doesn't care who's in the list, it only cares that it correctly sends a signal to everything in the dependent list when something happens. Now, the observer doesn't care too much in the sense of who they are connected to, but rather they are more concerned, the observer is more concerned about listening, basically reacting upon a signal it receives. In the lower level of code, we do care in fact who we're connected to, what our subject is, but basically the observer pattern abstracts most of that away to the point that we only care for our observer that once we receive a signal, we need to act upon it. So again, when, the, when we receive a signal, we react. Now one thing to keep in mind is that our subject can emit to multiple observables and our observers can listen to multiple signals. Basically observers can have multiple subjects and subjects can have multiple observers. Now in this case, let's add a score object to the board. So as you can see here, we have a player object, a health script, and a score script. Each one is responsible for a single thing. The health is in charge of displaying items items to the screen, score is in charge of displaying score to the screen, and player object is in charge of everything that deals with the player. When we get hit, when we get hurt, we want to emit signals to classes or scripts that depend on knowing when our player object gets hurt. So in this case, when we get hit, we send a signal to health and we say, hey health, we got hit. And then the health class determines what to do with that information. In this case, the health class determines 
determines that when it receives the signal that our player object gets hurt, it removes a help from the screen. And same thing for the score. When we send a signal to score, we let the score class know that, hey, we got hit and then the score class will react upon it. In this case, the score reacts by reducing points and then displaying that new score to the screen. One cool thing about the observable pattern is that we can have multiple signals and observers for each class. So for example, our health class, theoretically, not in GD script, but as an observable pattern as a whole, the health class can be a subject and have an observer on it. In this case, when we lose all our health, we can emit a signal to the game over script and say hey we have no more health points left and then the game over script can determine what to do with that information now basically what we talked about before was just the observable pattern as a whole not really how we can do it in gd script so let's look at how we can use the observable pattern in GD script. And lucky for us, Godot actually offers us a way to use the observable pattern, and that's through signals. So basically, Godot offers a way for us to emit messages from one object to another object. In other languages, this could be considered event emitters or even observables. Now, to use signals in your classes, you must have the object class as part of your inheritance chain. Very important. If object class is not part of your inheritance chain, you cannot use signals in your class. Declaring a signal is pretty simple. First, you need to declare a signal name on the subject class or the class that's going to be your subject. And then you need to declare a connection on the class that you want to be the observer. Now, in our subject class, you have to use the signal keyword very important followed by a unique name and then this is optional but you can have parentheses with optional arguments that will show up in your node doc in your godot application again this is optional you don't need it as a matter of fact if you do have arguments you still don't need this because it's not strict basically meaning that it won't throw an error if you decide to use more or less arguments when you emit a signal. This right here, the parentheses with the optional arguments, again, is just to show up in your node doc in the Godot application. You could leave this empty and still use arguments when you emit a signal, which we'll move on now. Now, when you want to emit a signal to the world, basically everything in your scene, what you use is the emit signal. Now, you use the emit signal, and this is important. You have to use or declare your signal name, but it has to be inside double quotations. Basically, you need to pass it as a string value. So take your signal name and pass it as a string value. This will emit a signal to your scene world, to basically all your observers who are listening. And you can also pass optional arguments. One thing to keep in mind is that you will not be thrown an error if you use more or less optional arguments than what is declared in the signal declaration statement. However, because no error is going to be thrown your way, it is up to you to decide how many arguments you want to pass. So again, as a programmer, you need to be careful when emitting a signal. Double check that you're sending the correct amount of arguments that you want to pass to your observers. Moving on to observers, as you can see here, we are going to take a look at how to declare signals on the observer side because you need two pieces for the observer pattern. One is the subject and the second is the observer. So the observer class has to be part of the object class. The object class gives you a method called connect and it takes in three arguments. It takes in a signal name. It has to be a string, a string inside as your first argument, then a target instance. This will always be self or rather in most cases, I cannot think of any other case at this moment, but in most cases, your target instance will be the self keyword as you want to assign your class as the observer the class that you're calling the connect method. And then lastly, you will have to put in as a third argument, the target method, basically the function inside your class that you want to execute once your class receives the signal. One important thing to note is that the third argument must 
be a string value. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So first you want to declare a variable and you want to get a node that's in your scene, a persistent node. Notice how you have to declare the name of your node that's on the scene as a string value inside the get node argument. Next, you call that variable object, in this case player node, followed by the dot notation, followed by the connect method. Notice how the first argument is the name of our signal. So if we go back to the previous slide, we called our signal unique name. So we go ahead and we use unique name as a string value as our first argument, followed by a comma, followed by our target instance, which is ourselves, which is the current class we're inside. So we use the self keyword, another comma, Third argument is the target method inside our current class. Basically, it is the function we want to execute when our current class receives a signal. Notice again that there are double quotations. This is a string value. So the third argument must be a string value. And as you can see here in our class, we have a function called sum function. In this case, we don't accept argument. However, you can add arguments inside of your function. So when your signal executes, it can send code that you can run inside your function. We're going to go ahead and take a look at that in code later. Now, again, the get node, we have to use get node. We do not want to instantiate an object. Rather, we want to grab a persistent node or object that already exists in the game in our scene tree. And we have to use the connect method because we are connecting our class to the node class that we want to get data from. And it doesn't even have to be data that we need from it. It could just be knowing when an event happened in that class. So this is what I'm talking about by persistent node. You see how we have a node here? In this case, this is a node 2D. And down here is an icon. There are scripts attached to it. Our health node will be our subject and our player node will be our observer. Now, lastly, when your observer is done receiving signals from the subject class, you will most likely want to close the connection. So to close the connection, you use the disconnect method. The disconnect method is exactly the same as the connect method in terms of the arguments you need to put inside the disconnect method. Basically, your first argument needs to be the name of the signal in the subject class. It has to be a string value. Then you have a target instance. This will most likely be the current class you're in, so you use the self keyword. Lastly, you have the target method, basically the method in your current class that is to execute code, or rather the function that is to execute when your current class receives a signal from the subject class, again being inside a string value. Now to do that, you would call your node object, followed by by the disconnect method and your first argument string value of the signal name in the subject class followed by the self keyword followed by the function in your current class the function inside the observer class so let's go ahead and take a look at some code so as you can see here i am inside the player script this is as you can see here the name in the scene is player and our node type is a sprite we extend from the sprite class. The sprite class has the object class in its inheritance chain. As you can see here, we use the signal keyword followed by the name of our signal. In this case, it's health changed. Now, I went ahead and created a player health to simulate emitting a new value for our player health when it changes. And this is just a value to make sure we don't run our signal a million times when we press the play button. Now, I won't go over too much about the process method, the virtual method provided to us, but just so you know, basically I want to run this function once, and only one time do I want to call our function called change health and pass in a value of negative 50. Now, when we execute our change health function, we are in fact passing a value. We're taking the current value of player health and we're adding a value. In this case, our 100 will be subtracted from 50, and 50 will be passed into our variable. And then we use the emit signal. So notice how our emit signal method takes in its first argument, a string value, which needs to be exactly the same as your signal name. That means it needs to be case sensitive. So since we called our signal health changed with a capital C, we need to pass that in as a string value, health changed with a capital C. And then I want to pass a value to all the observers, the new 
player health value. So again, to emit a signal from the subject class, you need to use the signal keyword, have a name, then you use the emit signal method with a string value with the signal name followed by optional arguments after the first argument. And check this out. Notice how we have an argument declared here, but our signal doesn't have it. That's because it's not required. If I do put parentheses here, that's just going to let the Godot app know to add signals to our node doc. Now, I'm inside our scene script. However, in the actual scene, our node is called health. So keep that in mind. We're extending from the node class, which extends from the object class. Now I created a variable called player node. I won't go over the on ready keyword, but just note that when you want to get a node and you don't want to put it inside the ready virtual function, you use the on ready keyword so you can have it globally scoped in your class. Now we take the player node and we get a node called player, which is grabbing the script from the node essentially. Now we take that variable name player node and we use the connect method and our first argument has to be the name of our signal which is health change capital C. It's case sensitive, keep that in mind. Followed by the self keyword, followed by our function we want to execute when we receive a signal from the subject class. Now this is our function we are going to run when we receive a signal from the subject class. It's called do something and we're receiving a value. Now basically we just want to print to screen that we changed value of health and show that to console in this case because we're running one time and we know the value will be 50, we will print out 50 here. However, since we're only running this function once, we do want to disconnect, as in we no longer want to receive signals from the subject class. So to do that, we call our variable player node, followed by the disconnect keyword, and check this out. Notice how they're the exact same. The connect and the disconnect take in the same arguments and the same argument types. We're just changing the keyword we're using for the method. So again, what this does is we take in the signal name as our first argument, the instance class, in this case our current class, so we use the self keyword, and then lastly the function we want to disconnect from, which is the function we're inside of at the moment. And what this does is we will no longer receive signals from the subject class, and we will no longer act upon it. So again, to receive a signal in your observer class, you have to get a node from the node that will be your subject. If you want it globally accessible for your current class, use the unready keyword. You want to connect with the available information you need to provide to your connect method. And notice how our connect is inside the ready function. It's important that when you connect, you do it inside the ready function. And lastly, when you no longer need to connect to your subject class, you use the disconnect method. Fairly straightforward. Anyway, that's all I have for you in this episode. Thank you for clicking the subscribe button and thank you for clicking the like button. I'm going to go ahead and upload this to GitHub, so feel free to download it and play around with signals. Signals is very important on your programming journey. It makes your life easier. It helps keep your code clean, especially because signals is what helps you implement the observer pattern. And the observer pattern is basically a solution to most of the common problems you will face when game programming. Thank you for joining me in this episode. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have an amazing day.